Hi, I'm Erin Power. And I'm Laura Rupsis. We're certified health coaches, and this is Health Coach Radio. This podcast is about the art, science, and business of health coaching. We share our insider tips to help you become a better coach and entrepreneur. And we interview expert guests to discover how they've made it in this growing field. It's time for health coaches to make an impact. It's time for Health Coach Radio. Today's episode is brought to you by the Health Coach Success Virtual Masterclass. My co-host Laura and I worked hard to pull together this special online event just for you. It's a five-day mini course in which we interview the best and brightest health coach and marketing experts on the planet to try to understand how they've become such great coaches and entrepreneurs. Included in the 20 plus expert interviews are some names you might recognize. Primal Health Coach Institute founder Mark Sisson, celebrity nutrition expert and New York Times bestselling author JJ Virgin, author, cardiologist, and staunch health coach advocate, Dr. William Davis, Michelle Liotta of Health Coach Power Community, Michelle Norris, CEO of Paleo FX and ID Life Nutrition, and many, many more. The Health Coach Success Virtual Masterclass is now available and totally free for a limited time. Check it out at primalhealthcoach.com forward slash success. Today on the show, we're welcoming Ray Messina, Health coach Ray Messina made his transition into the coaching space when he realized that he had been able to put his chronic asthma into remission with just dietary changes. His experience in the health industry includes 15 years in the healthcare space as a radiologic technologist, 10 of which were spent at the number one cancer hospital in the world, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Foundational to that, a 20 year background in martial arts and fitness taught Ray how the body moves and how to strengthen it in a functional and progressive manner. Ray considers health coaching to be an art and a science. He meets every individual client exactly where they are and applies the science individually. This is where experienced coaches shine. This is also where the challenge and the joy of health coaching comes to fruition. Ray believes in developing an ongoing relationship with each of his clients so that he can meet their individual goals one-on-one. This is just a great chat with a health coach who's quietly crushing it in the one-on-one space. The show notes for this episode and all previous episodes of Health Coach Radio can always be found at primalhealthcoach.com forward slash radio. Please welcome Ray Messina. Hi, Ray. Hi, thank you for so much for having me on. It's an honor. Yes, we're excited. We're excited to get to know you. We love talking to coaches. That's what we do here. It's our favorite thing to do here at Health Coach Radio because... Um, nobody's really talking to coaches, like people on the ground who are coaching the clients and that's what we like to do. So I would love Ray to start by getting to know you. So why don't you start with your story? Tell us what brought you to coaching in three to five minutes, the sort of short and tidy version of your story. Okay. I'll, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible, but it does start with me falling out of a tree as a little kid. Um, you know, we were, uh, (laughs) <laughs> we were climbing out, you know, I was about six or seven years old. Long story short, I was with my friends. I fell out of the tree. And when I fell out of the tree, my hand went behind me and became uh, dislocated and shattered. And uh, uh, long story short, when the cast came off, my form of physical therapy was uh, ask your dad to put up a chin up bar and start doing chin ups. Hmm. So um, I got into, even at a young age, just seeing, you know, what uh, exercise can do for you. Um, Going into high school, I was always very, um, I was always the shortest one in my class, smallest kid in the class. So um, I didn't really play organized sports. And when I got into high school, I did the the physical fitness team. And uh, that's open to anybody. It's, uh, they only take the top five uh, people on the team to go compete. And I got a chance to compete um, at Hofstra University. It was run by the Marine Corps. Um, I don't know what place I finished because there were so many competitors, but uh, that kind of like set me on the path of um, exercise. And uh, since I couldn't do much about my height at that point, you know, I was able to do something about my strength. Thank God I've acclimated to a normal height, but you know, uh, you know growing up in Queens in the sixties, you know, you're the smallest kid you know, you're going to be a target, you know, so it's good to start, you know, strengthening yourself. So that's a little bit about how I got on the journey of um, exercise and being interested in it. Um, I just want to point out, I was the tallest kid in my school. It could be a lot worse. Yeah, I 
I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. We all we all have what we what we we all want what we don't have, right? I've always wanted more height because all the really nice jeans are in like tall length that fit Aaron. Uh huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That, nope. Nope. Yeah. So, so awesome. So this is how you discover fit. So how do you enter into fitness as a profession? What did that journey look like? Uh, yeah. So what happened was uh, I wound up being an x-ray tech. You know, I went back to school. I, I uh, was able to get a, a license in radiography. And um, that's where I met my wife. And she had a background in martial arts. I had a background in martial arts. And when we got married, the first thing she said to me was, you know, I really want to uh, set up a martial arts school. So, um, you know, she gradually grew the business. I started to help her with that. So that really began to shape me as far as, you know, working with people. Um, it also taught me, um, you know, how the body moves. Uh, to, you know, there's a difference between martial arts and combat sports. And martial arts is all about how the move, body moves, being centered, being grounded, functionality, that kind of thing. So it also gave me a chance to... Um, you know, learn how to work with people, how to lead a class. You know, I made a lot of uh, mistakes there. You know, you, you, you learn from your mistakes, um, you know, uh, and then you grow from there. So that really helped me get going as far as um, working with people, fitness, you know, also with in martial arts classes, you know, each class, you know, especially with an adult class, it's going to run maximum an hour and 15, an hour and a half. And so how do I incorporate a little bit of fitness into that without running the class into the ground so that now I can't even practice blocks and kicks. So it forced me to do a lot of research. And, you know, I, I liked um, the body weight exercise, the calisthenics, you know, um, especially the way they're done in the, uh, in the service, you know, like four count exercises. It's safe. Everybody can get a warm up with them. Um, I also incorporated things like uh, animal exercises, you know, like bear crawls and crab crawls and uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, those are things that kids can do. So that kind of like gave me an idea as far as that goes. Um, when, my was, uh, when I got out of x-ray school in my early 20s, uh, you know, in order to become, uh, you know, a, a peaceful person, I decided I was going to become a vegetarian. Oh. And yeah, and um, that went terribly bad. You know, I, I, um, <laughs> you know, I did the brown rice, tofu, steamed vegetables, pasta. And within three years of being a vegetarian, I developed asthma. Wow. And it started off as exercise-induced asthma progressing to six different medicines. And, you know, it wasn't uncommon for me to run like a 104 fever. And, um, you know, I go, I, you know, I go teach a, a martial arts class and it, sounded like I just smoked a pack of camels right before class. I'd be packing up pump sprays and that went on for a few years. And I didn't know anything about, uh, you know, nutrition uh, as far as autoimmune diseases. And I happened to be waiting for one of my doctors and I looked to my right and there was some magazines and it was a shape magazine. I picked up the magazine and there was an article about autoimmune diseases and uh, food sensitivities, not, you know, because I had been tested for food allergies. I wasn't allergic to anything. And this was around 2003. And um, so I saw that article and I had already tried with a registered dietitian. Um, in the past, it didn't work. So I went out and I found a nutritionist. And this woman was definitely um, off the beaten path kind of nutritionist. And she says, all right, this, this vegetarian vegan diet you're doing you know, it's all well and good, but you're killing yourself doing it. And you need to take out the rice and the pasta and the beans and everything that we learn on the primal blueprint and start eating like real meat and real eggs and real butter and vegetables and stuff like that. And I kid you not, within two months, my asthma was gone. And, mm -hmm. you know, the puffiness, I had some puffiness around my face. Uh, that went down. My waist came in. So... I, I started to read more about, you know, nutrition. Unfortunately, like around 2003, I don't know if the primal blueprint was around then, or I know paleo was around and a lot of it was hit or miss. And then, uh, you know, there's that whole, like, I can't believe I can't eat this stuff anymore. And anytime I went back to it, I would get really, really sick, you know, uh, sinus infections and upper respiratory stuff. So um, that set me on that path. And then, uh, you know, I started, one of these days I stumbled upon, uh, 
across uh, Mark's Daily Apple. And I started reading up on the Primal Blueprint. And I had looked at other approaches. And the thing that I really liked about the Primal Blueprint is that it, there was the emphasis on fat. You know, I, I did the lean protein and the vegetables and, and that kind of stuff. And I never really felt satiated. But the, you know, with the Primal Blueprint, you know, he, he was the first one that I can remember that was really in favor of fat, you know, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, this makes complete sense to me. And it satiates my appetite. Uh, so I had that going and the martial arts schools going and, um, you know, I, I, as an x-ray tech, I had also worked at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Hospital uh, prior to my wife. That's where we met, but prior to my wife starting martial arts school. So it, it gave me, a, a, it taught me what compassion is, you know, working with critically ill people and, you know, just being there for them and not judging them for, for where they are in life and just you know, really grounding me. And uh, so all of these things started to come, come together. And my wife, she, she was uh, saying to me, you know, school's really successful. It's doing well. You know, you know, you ought to consider, you've got all of this stuff swimming around in your head. You ought to consider, you know, branching out on your own, try something else. And I said, you know, what, you're right. And uh, I initially started, I liked the idea of health coach. I didn't want to be a personal trainer. Not that I got anything against it. I didn't want to do strictly nutrition. Not that I got anything thing against it but I do very well on that one-on-one -on -one, hands-on kind of atmosphere and I, and I really wanted to um, you know I wanted to be some type of healer you know when I was at the hospital as an x-ray tech I was always assisting in diagnosing disease but you know I, I something was inside of me that just wanted to you know become some type of healer in whatever capacity I could could do and uh I, uh, I got started, I initially started taking a different uh, health coaching course and I didn't like, from a different company, I didn't like the tact it was going in. It was mostly psych, psych, psychology based, psychiatry based, how to convince people to take their medications. I'm like, no, this is not for me. And I started searching around. I was like, holy mackerel, you know, Pr Primal Blueprint had just come out with that, um, it wasn't health coaching, it was the Primal right. Blueprint expert. And uh, I said, wow, this is excellent. This is good. This is like speaking to me because it started to round out all of this knowledge, just packaging up in a very um, thorough but readable way, the nutrition aspect, the, uh, the uh, exercise component. Uh, it just started to put it all together. So I'm, I'm doing the courses and uh, I, uh, I, a friend of mine had um, uh, gastric bypass surgery. And this person, you know, they knew I, I helped my wife at the martial arts school and I appeared to be in good shape. And um, they said to me, do you think you can help me? And I'm like, well, tell me a little bit. And I didn't know it was this drastic, but the person had at one time weighed over 500 pounds, had the surgery, got down to 280. Hmm. And I said, well, I says, I'm taking these courses. I have an idea what I'd like to do. I said, you, you know, I'm going to use my the martial arts school in the off hours, are you available then? And uh, you're gonna be like um, patient zero for me. <laughs> and uh, I started to work with that person and they went from 280 down to 180. Wow. They, they, they even got a little bit lower and then they started going for skin reduction surgery. And that person told another person that was similar background and that person uh, went when they gave, came to me, they were they went from 380. The surgery brought them down to 180. Now they're at 130, and they're doing uh, skin reduction surgery as well. And th you know the business spreading has all been you know word of mouth. Hey, you look good. What are you doing? And I've been so so uh, fortunate to have some very visible clients. Like one of my clients is a bartender mm -hmm. in a very popular. Uh, bar restaurant near me. I mean, that's a lot of visibility. And like, I, I te tease this guy, he gives out my cards like they're coasters under the drinks because I've got <laughs> so much business from that bartender and that bartender knows somebody else and it knows somebody else and knows somebody else. And uh, it's just uh, netted me a lot of clients. Um, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at like, uh, meeting somebody, not even knowing that some person, just connecting with them. And it could be outside, it could be grocery shopping and, and just like start chatting them up a little bit. And uh, you know, hey, maybe you'd wanna consider working with me, especially um, my clients, uh, um, 
I have a lot of compassion. Uh, the, the age ranges go from my youngest to 17. My oldest is 81. You know, I have people that train up for knee replacements and I have people uh, recovering from surgery. So I kind of, I'm, I'm open to just about anybody and all that are coming in. Uh as you were kind of weaving that story, I was wondering, like I, my next question I wanted to ask you was like, well, who do you help and what problem do you solve? But it sounds like you have a very broad yeah, my, niche. Yeah, my, my niche is the person that, because I do everything one-on-one -on -one by appointment, um, you know, usually the first time they see me, after I do the discovery call and this is what you really want to do, okay, we're going to block out an hour. I go through the nutritional component. I do a little bit of health assessment uh, which uh, more like exercise assessment. I do um, just try them out on a little bit of exercise, see what their range is. That's my starting point. Um, so my niche is the person that is, um, you know, wants that one-on-one, -on -one, doesn't want to go to the gym, wants to schedule it like an appointment, adheres to that appointment, gets in, gets out, gets it done and goes. You know, I keep my room super cool. I have some uh, business people I literally ditch to tie because I focus on strength training. I give them homework to do, but my focus uh, on the physical aspect is the strength training. So they'll come in, they'll ditch the, ditch the tie. I have nurses that come in their uh, scrubs or whatever it is, and they'll, they'll literally go back to work afterwards because I, I run on time, I, I get them in and out. Um, and it's, again, it's for the person that may be, be suffering some gym intimidation or for whatever reason, they, they rather just work with me one-on-one, -on -one, get it done and go home as opposed to go to the gym. I, I, I think the gym is great, but this is, this is what works for me, that one-on-one -on -one format. Mm -hmm. Which we're advocates of, right? I mean, we've, many people have heard that on our podcast before that we think every coach should start there. And from the standpoint of a niche marketing and branding, I, I can see why having to really define any kind of niche market isn't as rele relevant to you because you're not doing online marketing, right? right. You're, not, you're not out there advertising. Everything's coming sort of organically through referral. So right. you're finding folks that are advocates. This is huge. And this is how my business started early on too. I didn't really advert. I didn't know how to do that. But like you, I wasn't afraid to walk up to somebody in the grocery store and look like they were struggling. Right. Yeah. And, and people refer. So at the same time, you know, my, my niche has sort of defined itself over time. Yes. Right. And it, it sounds like yours is as well. And sort of the other thing we have in common is cooperative spouses yes. that but wanted us to be able to leave what we were doing and attack something like else. My husband and I opened a gym together, but he's the one who really ran it early on while I had another job and kind of paid the bills until that got up and running. Right. So these are all little pieces of the puzzle that allow you to kind of do this one step at a time in a way that is, um, it stretches you and challenges you, but it provides you with a little bit of safety and encouragement. Can you talk a little bit about the, the mindset there on what that sure. journey was like? Sure, well, in the, in the big, you know, I, you know I, um, whatever you do, don't quit your day job, <laughs> you know, so, and try to do it on the cheap. And a lot of these things I learned when my wife, I incorporated a lot of her starting her business into me starting my business. Like when she started, she would teach in her martial arts program in uh, neighborhood association houses in Manhattan, you know, like, you know, or like a YMCA, whatever it is on the cheap, you know, wherever you could get space. So for me, the space would, was using her martial arts school in the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. The other thing was, you know, calling up friends that, you know, admire you, you know, but haven't worked with you yet and then offering them a crazy discount, you know, maybe even free a little bit in the very, very, very beginning because what I've learned is new people get you new people. You know, the, everybody's got a circle and once that circle becomes exhausted, you can't really expect too much from that person. But in the beginning, depending on what they do and how happy they are and, and what they've got going on, they will get you, you know, more clients. Somebody had told me, one will get you two, two will get you four, four will get you eight, eight will get you 16, 16 will get you 32, and then so on. And there's a lot of truth to that. Um, I wish it was a straight line, but as we all know, it's not a straight line. So I went from working in my wife's school in the off hours that she was having classes to 
finding a really small place because what I do, I don't need a lot of space for. And then uh, when another space came available, you know, moving into a bigger space and being able to spread out my equipment and things like that. And, uh, you know, I would say um, I started taking the courses in 2017. Well, actually 2016, I got certified in. Uh, so from 2016 to now, I've been building and working on it. And uh, again, first part time, you know, there was years where I was working full time at the school doing my thing. And then just slowly, you know, balancing it out, well, you know, um, uh, you know, coming out of one uh, venue and moving more into another venue, not just for my own well-being, but for the my uh, my wife's martial arts school. I just didn't want to pull the pin cold on that too. You know, we, ha we had to make sure she was up to speed on the uh, responsibilities that I was performing at the school and stuff like that. Okay, so you kind of transitioned. I'm really interested, like, out of curiosity, sure. you know, you described you had this small room and guys would come in and take their ties off and, yeah. and then do the workout and put their tie back on and go back to work. Like, <laughs> what kind of, how small was this room and what kind of stuff were you doing with them? It's mostly, the specifics of what I'm doing is compound body weight exercises done progressively. Okay. So, uh, so, you know, I have, you know, you know, the, the body weight progressions, they're out there. So, um, you know, say like somebody push-ups, right? If you can't do a push-up, you know, off the floor, then, you know, we can start off the wall. I have an adjustable, uh, I found a, it took me a while to find the right power tower I wanted. I wanted something adjustable and, um, uh, Nautilus makes an adjustable one. So I have that. So I can go say push-up progression. I go from the wall to a high bar setting, start dropping the bar right. set down to the ground. And then I have a hundred pounds in weighted vests in two and a half pound increments. So I can start doing it that way, or I can do it with the feet up. So that's just okay. like the chest progression. So I, with a basic client, I have A and B workouts. Uh, some of my clients, I have A, B, C, and D workouts so that they're all, you know, what they do on uh, a Monday of one week won't be the same on the Monday of another week. I have really good air conditioning in the room. I pump it up high. I'm focusing on strength training. So when you do strength training, you're not necessarily going to break that massive sweat as if you're doing a, you know, a hit class or a sprint class or a Tabata class. It's, it's very, very doable. Cool. Yeah, easily doable. And, and look, I, I'm a huge advocate of strength training. I mean, I think you you know that. But um, yeah. and body weight is phenomenal. And I think any new coach getting started that wants to try to incorporate a fitness program into their program, I love your your process there. Right, this compound movement, body weight progression with very very little equipment doesn't require a huge investment. Fantastic. Yeah. I have a question though. I have a question because I was thinking about this. I was chatting with uh, a client of mine this week who wanted to start exercise and we were just, I don't actually do fitness in my practice, to be honest with you, even though I'm qualified to do so. I just don't, I won't bore you with why, but she was like, what kind of stuff can I start with? So I, I said, well, there's, you know, the, the base essential movements, squat, plank, push up, mm -hmm. and then pull up. It's like, like I could articulate how to scale a body weight squat, a body weight, like obviously a plank, a push up. But if you don't have a pull up bar, um, do you have any like tips on how you can recreate the motion of a pull up? Yes. Without a pull up bar, because I was like, you put your elbows on the table, and like I don't know, like what would your suggestion what be for somebody to do at home? Yeah, without yeah. a pull up bar, they don't have a pull up bar. So what's the? So it would be you'd have to get under a table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like a dining room table, and you got to make sure that thing is not going to tip. So, you know, so if you want to do, have them do a pull up, you know, their lower half will be tucked under the table and their hands will be like this on the table. And if you want them to do a chin up, their head will be under the table and their hands will be like this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's one way, you know, another way is you can get, um, and again, they have to be careful with this is they can uh, do, you know, a rowing type of, uh, right. you get what they call it in an Australian row. I don't know, but two chairs and a broomstick does it. You know, oh, right. you two chairs, yeah. put the broomstick and they can work it this way. They can work it this way. So that's one, that's uh, some ways that they can incorporate that. Awesome. Thank you. Fantastic tip. I love that. Um, so tell me a little bit about, <laughs> so you went to an RD who didn't help you, right? Someone who's licensed in his or her state. Yeah. Um, and, but then you went to go see a nutritionist mm -hmm. who is just sort of more alternative that way. And that was helpful to you. 
Yes. So did, did that experience kind of inform how you, your approach to people and based on that experience? And um, can you speak a little bit about how that in, informs what you do with your clients from a coaching perspective and the difference between maybe those three roles, an RD versus a nutritionist versus what you do? Yeah. Well, you know, when I went to see the uh, RD, you know, it was because I was in martial arts and it was, and it was at the point where I hadn't become asthmatic yet. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to get a, a handle on nutrition. You know, I had no, I, really no idea. And she gave me the, you know, very structured. She had me eaten six times a day, brown rice. Blah, blah. And I remember sitting in her office. I'm gaining weight, by the way, you know, during this is going on. I'm sitting in her office and she can hear my stomach growling across the table. And I just got done eating two cups of brown rice, some skinless chicken and, and whatever else it was. It was I'm like, this is, and I'm shelling out, you know, Boku bucks to see her. And I'm like, you know, nothing against her. This is her approach, but it just did not work for me weight wise. When I saw the nutritionist, the nutritionist has a, a background in applied kinesiology. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's controversial. Some people call it hocus pocus. It worked with me. And, you know, she would do that uh, muscle testing based on the meridians, you know, hold something that you're allergic to in your hand. And I know I'm kind of strong. So, and I was watching the way she was moving. It worked for me, irregardless. She helped rule out what I was allergic to or sensitive to. Uh, when I work with clients, what I do is uh, I have some handouts from the Primal Blueprint, but I also just construct a cheat sheet. And it's not, it's not a, a black and white thing. You know, people come in and I just want them to be the best version of themselves, you know, genetically, whatever's in there. And what's exciting is when somebody gets sent to me by somebody that's already in my practice, it's like, I can hardly see what's going to happen with this person. You know, what's going to happen, you know, because it's not just losing weight. It's like, building lean muscle mass. And you know, when you take away those inflammatory foods, like the first thing that happens is your skin starts to like radiate, you know? So it's, um, it's, it's not a, it's not, I want you to look this way. You need to hit this, not hit, hit this way. I'm not very, I'm not even very strict about what to eat and what not to eat. It's like, these are some suggestions. Um, and, and let's just go from there. You know, I've been, you know, prior to me becoming a health coach, I was transitioning from martial arts instructor and assistant to um, health coach. As I'm taking these lessons, you know, online, uh, I'm packing on weight because I'm doing so much emotional eating. You know, I'm like, you know, at the time, almost 50 years old, what the heck are you doing restarting? Like, what are you doing? And I wound up packing on almost 30 pounds of stress eating. Wow. Mama Lucians, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was able to hide it because uh, you know I wasn't that heavy to begin with, so there was room for expansion, so to speak. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I started taking the courses and, and you know things started picking up for me and it helped me just like dump a ton of weight and really get the best version of myself. So I've been with clients since 2016 where I've had somebody come in and I can think of one person in particular, came in, lost 20, was going through some life issues, put back 20, and now has lost it again. So I'm in for the long haul with these clients. You know, That's that meeting with me twice a week uh, for, a, for a journey, You know, however long that's going to be, is what we're there for. You know, what keeps them coming, once they dial in with the nutrition, what keeps them coming is the strength training, trying mm -hmm. to like, you know, uh, you know, when you get to a certain point, you know, then I can ramp it up. I can always challenge the clients, the ones that have enough flexibility and get strong enough, I could start them on bridging exercises, handstand push-ups, one-legged squats, variations thereof, you know, pull-ups, chin-ups, you know, always challenging. I also uh, watch the volume and intensity. So as soon as, you know, as people are getting much, much stronger, I start dropping the volume down, you know, so it's uh, that balancing act. So when they're with me, it's all business. It's like, how you doing? How you doing? Do you have any questions? Um, 
you know, that kind of thing. They share what they're eating. You know, if you're going to Italy, you better have some pasta. Don't come back here and tell me you didn't have some of the pasta. Enjoy it. If you go, one of my, one of my clients, he's, um, he's, a, uh, he's in real estate. His wife is a real estate attorney, and they got invited to this real famous French restaurant in Manhattan where you, you can't even get in. I'm like, you better have dessert, and I better you mm-hmm. had some of you know, the other stuff that hits the table and enjoy it. You know? Enjoy these things. Um, it becomes an issue when it becomes an everyday thing or three times a week or four times a week, you know, that that's kind right. of, you know, there's, there's compulsive eating and then there's like eating because this is a great occasion. Enjoy it. You know, uh, my birthday was August 30th. My brother had a, um, a, a cake. It was, a a cannoli cream cake from this Ooh. bakery. So, you know, I had a piece of that. I actually had two pieces of that, <laughs> you know, and it's just, you know, you just take care of business during the week and it, and it drops off, but you gotta enjoy life. And what I try to do with my clients is build an instinctiveness in them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. eat when you're hungry, don't eat when you're hungry, eat what your body is telling you to eat. And, and just, you know, just be, build that instinctiveness. My clients, the thing that's been successful for me is they don't want to track macros. They don't want to write, you know, I have them keep a food journal in the beginning just mm-hmm. to really get the hang of it. And then, and then that's it. They, they, they want that. And inst- they like being instinctive about it. Yeah. So when you hear things like, you know, they'll ask me, is this keto? Is this intermittent fasting? So I explain the first thing I ask them is, do you know what keto it, it even is? And so I explained to them the whole process of ketosis. And I said, basically, you go in and out of it on a daily basis, depending on what you're eating. So don't get hung up on that word. And then, you know, same thing with intermittent fasting. I'm like, did you eat breakfast today? I'm like, no, I wasn't hungry. Okay, well, you just intermittent fasting. Congratulations. So, yeah, you're fasting. <laughs> yeah. No. So I don't make any hard and fast rules. Just try to develop that gut instinct and not stress out over it. Life's too short. I agree. I'm... You're speaking my language exactly. That's exactly the kind of messaging I put in my practice as well. And I love that you use birthday cake as an example because it's your birthday. So you better have some cake. It is once a year. And like, um, I think well, what I do with my clients is I, I, I encourage them to have the full experience. Like, okay, you're going to go to that exclusive French restaurant. So have the experience like walking in the, the atmosphere, even the act of like looking at the menu and deciding and getting excited about the food before it comes, enjoying every bite of it deciding if it was worth it or not. Uh, mm-hmm. And then also like paying attention afterwards, what happens, like how, you know, h- how do you feel after? Was it, was it worth it? Was it satisfying? Or maybe it wasn't. Did it wake up some sugar cravings? It's not a problem if it did, but just notice these things. And I, you know, I like that you use the word instinct. I, I use the word intuition, although that word's been a little bit overblown in the nutrition space, but um, that's, I believe the gift that a coach gives a client, like yeah. you just need to know how to do this. So you can go about your business, make the choices in your life, birthday cake or fancy restaurant or whatever. And I, I, I love that you're doing that because gosh, I think there's so much value in that for the end user. They mm-hmm. don't need to be on a diet, yes. right? Like I like to work a lifestyle. Yeah. They have, people have a finite uh, capacity for dieting, right? Like, it's like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to. So I'm really, really thankful that the coaches like you are are doing that and tapping back into clients intuition and instinct. That's awesome. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, No, no. I was going to say, it's amazing that, you know, once you 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 build that intuition, they, they follow it just intuitively without having to think about it or anything. It's it's amazing. You know, when I tell somebody, if you're not hungry, don't eat. You know, it's like that acronym when, when hunger ensues naturally. I use that with them. And they're like, you mean I don't have to eat breakfast? No, I recommend you don't if you're not hungry, you know, mm-hmm. Just, yeah. but if you're hungry, like one of the, the bartender I'm telling you about, you know, he, uh, he gets off shift late at night and he doesn't eat, um, you know, from like three o'clock on because that's the dinner hour. And he's, so when he gets home, he's hungry. So he'll eat late at night. And when he gets up in the morning, sometimes he's still hungry. He'll eat again but then he doesn't eat during the day. I don't tell him not to eat. He just follows what his body's telling him. Nice. So you're seeing clients about twice a week ish. Yep. And, and the duration of the program depends on whoever's in front of you. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And however long they want to, uh, I have people that have been with me since I first started in 2016 and um, you know, people for whatever reason, you know, they drop off or they don't want to do it anymore or whatever, but I have a good, retention 
Um, and I think it's, um, you know, it's again, that's that compassion that, that I learned, you know, you know, one of the things that hung me up about being a health coach that stressed me out at age 50 was that I was starting at age 50, but it's also something that I have very much in my favor because by the time you get to 50, life's, you know, kicked you around a little bit like a soccer ball. And then you have some compassion mm -hmm. for people, you know, in uh, 2014, my wife and I, we, we lost our home to a house fire. And, uh, and so <laughs> talk about stress, <laughs> no doubt. you know, so, so it's those, you know, things along those lines, uh, it just builds up that compassion when I can connect to a client, when I don't hassle them, I don't pressure them. Um, I meet them where they're at and not where I think they should be at, you know, um, they write that, you know, they basically write the program. You know, I just give them, I'm a conduit. That's it. You know, uh, there's, um, there's this writer, um, his name's Anthony DeMello and he uses this line, um, you know, if you get it, you did it. If you didn't get it, you did it. You know, I'm just a conduit, you know, that's it. That's it. You know? You know, so I, I love that mindset. And, and I, I think there's too many coaches that go into this business thinking that it's their job to tell people what to do. Right. right. And, uh, or people that are looking to go this road as a health coach, thinking it's a fast track to being an RD or an, like, that's not what coaching no. is about. Right. It's, I love the term conduit. You're exactly right. And what I, what I also love about kind of what you're saying here is you, part of, part of what we do as coaches is to help our clients find their own self-efficacy, right? Their own ability to make decisions and be okay with the decision they make and it's okay and it empowers them. But at the same time, you've, some clients graduate you, you know, they don't yeah. need you anymore and they're able to move on and God bless. And they're probably your best referrers, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you've got the clients that still need you. They've grown, they've changed. They're still kind of holding on to you because you're you're able to grow with them, it sounds like, right? And the ability, so there will, and that's the other benefit of having some sort of fitness component to what you do, I think, for folks, because there are those people that just, when left to their own devices, they're probably not going to, they don't like going to the gym, to your they, point, they right? It, yeah, my clients have made it very clear to me, we would never put ourselves through what you do to us. <laughs> there is no way we would do it. And, you know, it's, um, you know, I started, um, you know, in addition to the um, strength training, I started a, a HIIT class once a week. And it was, uh, you know, it was, it came on the suggestion of uh, this attorney that I'm working with. And she said to me, she says, you know, Ray, she says, I'm never going to do this at home. I was trying to inspire clients to do some type of, uh, you know, HIIT, whether it was outside sprinting. You know, I gave them multiple choices. At the end of the day, nobody's doing it. And she says, you know, Ray, I'm not going to do this when I get home. I said, you know, you're right. I said, if I needed legal services and you gave me a hand of briefs and documents to file, <laughs> this the house, it's not getting done. So I totally get it. You know, but, but then again, what the interesting was, thing was I started this class. I did it for about a year. And then the same person said to me, don't take this the wrong way, but seeing you three times a week, it's just too much. I said, <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that because I've seen the class dwindle a little bit and I've seen a little struggle and I'd rather hear that than have a mass exodus out of my practice, of, you know, of losing people because, you know, not only do they not want to see me one, three times a week, they just don't want to see me at all. So I just, you know, just this summer, I decided to give it a, give that particular class a break. Mm -hmm. Gives me a break too. So, um, yeah. well, it's funny you say that because I, I teach hit classes and, uh, I get, you know, it's, it's a big, big gym that I teach at. So it's like the big full classes, 30 people or whatever, but I'll go out into the weight room and see people like people on their own without being told doing hit, like doing burpees and doing like box jumps. And it's like, what? Ugh, you do that on your own without some instructor telling you to do it. It's crazy to me. Um, I actually have a question specific to a certain couple of clients that you kind of, you kind of mentioned at the beginning when you were telling your story. I, like you had, you said, said you had like two clients who had had weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. So what was it like working with those folks? And, and like, the reason why I ask is because we actually had a weight loss surgeon on the podcast a while ago. And I had a client that was a weight loss surgery client. And I really struggled to work with her because she kind of put all of her eggs in the surgery basket. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, my body's just going to eat itself. I don't really need to understand how to eat. And so how, how was your experience working with those folks? It was, uh, it was, it was really good. Um, 
you know, both of them really didn't have a lot of uh, experience working out. Uh, I love working with people that haven't worked out or feel uncomfortable working out. It's like a blank slate and I just start where they're at and there's a huge margin for growth with those clients. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's um, the psychological component can come into it. You know, it's, uh, you know, you've had the um, restriction, you know, you're, you're, you're restricted from taking in so much calories, but there's a, there's a whole mental piece to that. And I understand it because I did eat compulsively and packed on 30 pounds when I was going through this stressful point in my life. And I think with, with uh, people that have had to have weight, weight loss surgery, it's probably ramped up even a little bit higher uh, at some point, you know, with some clients and not, not those two, but you know, with some clients, I've actually referred them out to therapists when I see that much of a roadblock. I, I did see, um, you know, I saw this one thing written and I, I tell my clients this, that um, uh, emotional eating uh, equal, you know, emotional eating uh, will give you short-term relief plus long-term suffering. And it just mm -hmm. starts that cycle over and over and over again. And sometimes it can take somebody months to get that. So uh, to answer your question is I have a lot of patience and tolerance, you know, I, you know, as long as you're coming, you know, and sometimes what keeps them coming is they start seeing the benefit of the exercise. Wow. You know, uh, one, one client told me they went to their fridge and they opened it up and they were able to get all the way down to the vegetable bin, you know, <laughs> whole position and they had never ever been done, it, done that before, you know, so I have that spectrum of, you know, people, you know, another poor, you know, uh, I don't want to say poor, but another uh, person um, had multiple cancer issues and uh, a victory for that person was being able to put their own sock on, mm -hmm. you know, being able to actually lean forward, put on his sock. And on the other hand, I've got uh, one young guy, he's an Olympic hopeful for uh, swimming. And I've explained to the mother that I'm not a strength and conditioning coach, but she said the last one. Uh, actually ran him into the ground and he started losing weight races and you know he's been working with me and he he's he's noticed an uptake uptick in his uh, swim time so we'll see what what goes so it's very uh it's sliding you know it's from somebody that can't get down the stairs because i'm in the basement of this building somebody can't get down the stairs to like somebody that's like bordering on like you know, like almost you know an olympic athlete you know just mm -hmm. kind of like using that same philosophy, just adjusting the intensity. Yeah, I think you touched on something really important there. Industrial design, why aren't the vegetable drawers <laughs> right, right there in the middle of the fridge, <laughs> right at the bottom? That doesn't make any sense anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, the patience thing is really nice. I, I like that, you know, and maybe, I think that's a really good lesson. Actually, I'm getting that sense from you. Like you, you you're not in a hurry to improve your child your clients lives because this is a lifetime this is a lifetime of health that you're achieving for them so it's not like get in get out do my program and go you're with them and i think that's actually really refreshing we don't hear a lot of i, I don't know laura i haven't heard a lot of people who are sticking with clients for a long long time i think it's an interesting way of going about it yeah because so many of us just build these oh, i have a 12-week program or i have yeah. an eight-week program or and and i think there's places for that for sure but i think there's tremendous value in you know hey i have this structured program that i put everybody this is where the education is going to come from but but the um i think your approach to this makes it very comfortable for people to just keep going for as long as they need to keep going yeah. and and i think your clients can probably feel the unrushedness in you yeah. right the patience in you and so because you have patience with them it gives them the empowerment to have patience yeah, for themselves the yeah and with the process right? because everyone's in a hurry i gotta lose this weight i gotta lose this weight fast and it's like well you didn't put it on fast like what like whoa tap the brakes right yeah mm -hmm. it's interesting yeah it's it's a it's a it's a lifetime journey you know and the thing is as 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 you ladies know the the amount of information that the new information that's always coming out it's it's actually hard to keep up with it you know uh mark sisson does such a phenomenal job i mean uh, i always feel like he's approached the primal blueprint the way he used to as a competitive triathlete it's like all in i mean it's unbelievable mm -hmm. the stuff that's always coming out and trying to keep up with it and 
you know, I always use myself as a testing ground, as a proving ground first, okay. try something out. If I really like it, maybe I'll mention it to a client if it's appropriate and then go from there. Same thing with the, um, the exercise, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's always little tweaks and little nuances coming out, just even with the simple body weight exercises to try to challenge my clients a little bit to see, uh, you know, try it, try them with something new, you know? Where did you get your fitness training from? Where does that education and background come from? Just my experience being in uh, martial arts and, you know, work, going to a gym, working out, picking up books and reading and, and all that other stuff. Yeah. I know what it's like to do it the wrong way. You know, when I was in my uh, early 20s and, you know, you pick up a, a weightlifting magazine and, you know, you think this is what you're going to do. And I remember like being 21, 22 years old and having such bad tendonitis in both my elbows from doing, you know, skull crushers on, you know, uh, with a, with a easy curl bar. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? You know, that's my favorite way to do them. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with that? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so you learn the hard way school of hard again it's a, one of the perks also it's seeing what resonates in me i did notice though you know um when i would um do some real strenuous weight training i noticed that my um my kicks and punches during my martial arts uh career would start to slow down you know, it would be great. I could carry a refrigerator up a flight of stairs, but uh, if I'm going to go, uh, you know, uh, rounds with somebody, you know, it's forget it. I'm gassing out or I'm coming, my punches and kicks are coming out slow. So instead of, you know, doing that strength training program, and I, there's nothing wrong with it, uh, but do not, not, you know, not doing that strength training, you know, sets and reps, you know, on the bench, you know, uh, just as opposed to doing compound body weight exercise. When I, incorporated that I noticed how much better my movements were how much more fluid I was how much more balanced I was and you know pound for pound it's a huge payoff you know when you can you know do a handstand push-up you know repetitively I mean it's just such a great uh, upper body builder core builder it really translates into everyday average life it's uh, you know and I hear the success stories usually I hear from my clients where they don't expect you know, uh, how strong they are. You know, one, one of the moms that I work with, she's in her mid forties, she went on a cruise and, um, you know, there's one of those rock climbing walls and, um, she figured she was going to give it a try and she left everybody in the dust. She said, <laughs> like big gym guys on the deck that could not get halfway up the wall. And she's moving up and down like spider woman or, um, a guy that, couldn't move a ladder is now hanging Christmas decorations, you know, in front of his house. An interesting demographic that I started getting recently is contractors. Oh. You know, when you get into your fifties and early sixties as a contractor, if you've been doing that since your twenties, you're at the peak as far as your expertise level goes. But if you haven't been doing anything, you're at the bottom of your physical Mm -hmm. capabilities because you know they're notorious for living off of fast foods at the job sites not doing any type of uh, supportive exercise to support what they do so I've got two contractors right now and um, you know one guy has lost 30 pounds and he just showed me he just unloaded a pickup of cement bags they were 80 pound bags they were over a hundred bags he had to carry it from the curb to the back of his place and then he hand mixed everything. I said, well, that's nice. great, but I guess I'm not going to see it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> right, right, right. Take you why. And he just did it because he can do it now. You know, he just wanted to challenge himself. Another guy, the other contractor won uh, $600 worth of tools in Home Depot. You know, they had a contest for contractors, how fast you could put uh, three screws into a wooden board. And he did the three screws in 14 seconds. And they're like, you know, we're going to enter your time. Uh, and he won $600 worth of tools. And here's another guy that's, you know, revitalizing his career. There's no reason why you can't keep working until, you know, you really don't want to work. You don't have to succumb to disease. You can spin it around, you know, you, you can revitalize yourself. So that's a great market. And I'm excited to about is yes. tapping into these guys and women that work with their hands for a living. Mm -hmm. They're in the trenches. They're at, they got a real high level of expertise. Now let's 
get your body up to where your brain is, you know? Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting niche actually. And like, I, it's funny cause I, I have, I have a little hobby farm, so I'm always doing manual labor. One thing I found as I get older and I've actually been working on this in the gym is my grip strength is becoming more important than almost anything else. Mm -hmm. Do you work on that with these guys? Yeah. Oh yeah. And well, did yeah, the guy I, do the, the screws with a screwdriver? I'm yeah, assuming. Screwdriver. Okay. Okay. Now, now he did, uh, you know, he is, uh, you know, he came in and uh, like his forearms are the size of my calves. Like Popeye. <laughs> yeah, like Popeye. But, you know, by trimming down and by eating the right way, you know, he just like killed it in there. He just killed it in there. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. You know, I love the fact too, because, you know, we, I talk to people all the time that have, you know, they get this imposter syndrome. Hey, I'm not an RD. Hey, I'm not a this. I don't have this education, that education. And we keep talking about, but you have your own life experience and that yeah. experience has value. And um, I kind of loved hearing that the strength training and the program you built came out of what worked for you and yeah. your own experience. You didn't have to go get a degree in kinesiology. Yeah. yeah. Could have, I guess, but I don't know if it would really make any difference at all in the people that you're serving now and the kind of impact that you're having. Yeah. I, I, I think a lot of times is less is way better, but just focus on that less. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm always um, going back to the course material that I initially took because, you know, you go through it, you take the exam, I did the research, but I know there's still stuff in it. I can like relearn or touch, touch upon. I did the, um, the keto mastery program just because I wanted to ramp up my expertise in that way, in that regards too, just enhance my skills. So it's like, I'm not all over the place. I'm boiled down to, you know, the nutrition, the lifestyle, um, approach. Uh, if clients want to learn a little bit about meditation, I can give them like a primer on meditation and I recommend them using an app and the importance of, of meditation and bringing that into their lives, you know, proper rest, proper sleep, but the, the real focus is like really sticking to the nutrition, like enhancing my expertise in nutrition. And it's not just me learning. It's like, how am I delivering this information? How am I, how am I speaking to my clients uh, as far as getting the message? And then, you know, um, not going too crazy up the ranch with my strength training aspect either. Just keeping it down to the, those essential movements and then enhancing, playing with them, you know, experimenting with myself see what some of the studies are out there. I was reading, um, I'm reading up on a study of, of making that neurological connection to your muscles when you're actually training, which when you're doing a full body weight squat, it's really hard to bring your mind into what muscles are being activated because there's just so many muscles going on. But there is research where if you can bring that, that neurological connection into your muscles, you can literally turn on more muscle fibers and get more of a workout. It makes good sense. Now I'm trying on the doability and see, you know, if it has, if, if that works, it's almost like, uh, it becomes more meditative, the workouts. Yeah. I think that's actually, I feel, I remember that research from the nineties. I don't know if it's making a resurgence, but the neuromuscular connection, like pretending that you're curling a heavy dumbbell, uh -huh. sorry, barbell. And even the act of like, imagining a heavy barbell can can recruit and fire the muscles yeah to the same degree that actually performing that rep would be that's yeah. very cool yeah. uh, well you have you have a really interesting practice I, i'm really liking uh i like what you've put together i think it's uh it's right what right where people need to be helped in in the way in a very like multifaceted way of helping people um now if you were going to pep talk or encourage somebody who's thinking about becoming a health coach because that's we have a lot of people listening to this podcast who are like oh i kind of want to do it but i don't know where to start what would what would be some of your advice you'd give to a newbie or a wannabe health coach so the first thing would be don't quit the day job you know get Good. used to working long hours you got to put some hustle into it and you know i learned how much it takes from getting the, the martial arts school going you know i saw my wife she would uh we live on long island the school's on long island she would drive into Manhattan, do private lessons with some of the kids that she worked with in Manhattan, drive all the way back out to Long Island, you know, do the classes, build a website, do the marketing, you know, really, you got to put, you got to put an effort. It's all effort. It's all sweat equity, but also don't quit your day job. You know, I was doing my uh, x-ray job, um, you know, and then helping her. So, um, don't quit your day job. Start off cheap. 
Start off with your friends. You know, we all know somebody that wants to get in shape, lose some weight, whatever it is. Understand what your niche is. And that niche is going to come from the inside out. It's not going to come from the outside in. Just see what resonates with you. When you, when you talk to somebody, look at them and, and see, see that connection. See, um, see, see what's working for them. You know, don't, don't, um, don't try to tell them what you think is going to help them. See what they're telling you. See if you can understand what they're saying to you and then go from there. Um, grow slowly. Um, take mm. chances. You know, it's okay to experiment. It's okay to say, hey, you know what? That wasn't such a good idea. Maybe we'll go back to trying this or, or whatever. You know, uh, don't, don't be afraid to apologize. Put the ego in check. You know, <laughs> you know put the ego in check. You know, you, if, I, if you, um, an aspiring health coach, if one of your clients uh, loses weight and, or, or hits whatever goals they want, you know, you didn't do it. They did it. You're the conduit. <laughs> You know, put it in check, you know, and if they don't get it, well, you didn't mess up either. It just wasn't a good match or it wasn't for them. You know, um, again, just listen to what your, your clients want. I, I treat this, I get, and I'm sure, sure you and Laura feel the same way is like, I get the, I almost, I treat this almost like a vocation because it extend, it, it extends beyond physical health and weight loss. I love to see what happens after, you know, I've seen people uh, get a new job, get a new apartment, leave a bad relationship, get into a new relationship. Just, just, you know, when somebody feels good physically, uh, mentally, they, they become their best version of themselves and they just try new things. They experiment with new things. They just branch out. They have way more confidence. So it just extends besides, you know, I wanted to get down a certain size kind of thing. You know, it's, it, it goes way beyond it. So I treat it like a vocation. You know, I, I treat it as, as almost sacred, you know, because you're helping change a person's life. And um, let's see where that goes. Let's see what happens with that. So I, I would say that. I, I would, one unique thing I do do, uh, I meant, and I meant to mention this, is my clients, when I, at the end of the session, I will give them, I buy in bulk the Primal Blueprint Quick and Easy Meals. Mm. They love getting that that cookbook. So it's like, wow, hold on. Cause sometimes they'll look at your puzzle. All right, what am I going to make for breakfast? What am I going to make for lunch? What am I going to, you give them that book. It's phenomenal. You know, and the recipes in there are great. You, you get like six or seven recipes and now you hit the ground running. So that's another thing that I like to do with my clients. And, you know, because we're health coaches, we get, you know, we can get them at a decent price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a resource. It feels like a gift and it provides them with, I agree with you. I, I don't think people need like 50,000 recipes. We eat a lot of the same foods from mm -hmm. week to week. Yeah. Um, and, and I, it's the gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> I do. Um, you know, I, I do have a little bit of a presence on Instagram, a little bit of a presence on Facebook, but what I do do is I have a private chat room going on my WhatsApp. And those are just oh. for my clients. And I'll post just client related things, just stuff for them to see. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I do a little, I'm big into uh, using the pressure cooker. So I'll do little videos of myself doing pressure cooker recipes. Sometimes I'll put it out on Instagram. Sometimes I'll just keep it for my clients. Um, well, I'll address certain issues that's really burning that I don't feel like putting way out to the world, but I'll just confine it. And uh, my clients, especially some of the, um, the ones that aren't so tech savvy that they don't want an Instagram account. They don't want to go on on Facebook, but I've had maybe not the best experiences having that private chat room. That's a safe space for them. So they feel okay with, uh, you know, um, joining in on there. And that's a way of me getting information out to my clients. What a great tip because you're right. I mean, there's, you know, my gym has a little private Facebook group for our members, but not everybody wants to be on social media. And I, I'm seeing more and more people looking to kind of drop it actually. So yeah. WhatsApp might be a great way to do that. It's just like, um, yeah, I guess there's a bunch of different tools you could use to do that. You could probably- Yeah, I'm sure there's much better ones out there, but you know, that's yeah. one that's uh, worked for me. And uh, you know, my, my clients like, I only say it that way because I know I'm not the most tech savvy person at times <laughs> as, as well. But um, that, that's the kind of thing that's worked me, that little um, private chat room with clients. I like it. Very cool. no, but I, I love that you're an example of somebody that um, 
because th- I get this question a lot from people too, like, hey, do I have to do I have to be on social media to grow my business? You're a prime example of somebody that's been able to do it kind of one step at a time. We tell people all the time, and you know, I heard you say you kind of started down this path 2016. It's now 2019. I, I tell people all the time, it give it three years for you okay. to go from zero to I've got a thriving business that's supporting me that I love and I'm I'm I mean right Aaron like this yeah. this three year thing so I, I just think it's fantastic so but you do have a presence in social media where can people find you because I know we're going to have some coaches that want to follow you and kind of see what you're doing or may just want to reach out and find out how a little bit more about how you built it because maybe social media and digital marketing is really not their bag you know, the last thing before I get into the social media thing is, yeah. I'll say is you got to walk. If you're going to talk to talk, you got to walk the walk. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, you know, something cut out of a magazine, but you really got to be living it. You got to be, you know, my, my wife always tells me I'm the best advertisement because, you know, people, I'm not full of myself, but for 56, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. You know? And um, people are like, wow, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, well, this is what I'm doing. You know, maybe you're interested in working with me, that kind of thing. You know, there's a, there's a private joke that goes around my practice and it's like, you got to go to Ray. <laughs> I think I'm <laughs> going to put that on a t-shirt. Got to go to Ray. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, if they want to find me on um, Instagram, it's Ray Messina Health Coaching LLC. And if they want to find me on uh, Facebook, it's the same. Easy. Awesome. Ray, thank you so much for your time and just being so candid and authentic is the oh, best you. word I can find. Oh, you and Aaron, you made this a great experience for me. So uh, thank you very much. It was great. You're so welcome. Thanks, right. Ray. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Primal Health Coach Institute. To learn more about how to become a successful health coach, get in touch with us by visiting primalhealthcoach.com forward slash call. Or if you're already a successful health coach, practitioner, influencer, or thought leader with a thriving business and an interesting story, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with us at hello at primalhealthcoach.com and let us know why we need to interview you for Health Coach Radio. Thanks for listening.